Okay, so uh, we know what chain rule is. Uh, chain rule from first semester was where if I had a function within a function, we had to unpack it by doing outsized derivative times inside derivative. Um, but having to go backwards when you have all that mess coming out of chain rule, it's harder to, to put things back. So u substitution is the reverse process of derivative chain rule. It allows us to kind of put things back where they're supposed to be. Um, and we basically want to look for a function and its derivative to be in the integral. Uh, so uh, use uh, basically the idea is that u substitution allows us to um, keep another variable in play to help us keep track of the parts that are messy from uh, that's resulting from from chain rule. OK, so um, <clears throat> let's do some review from first semester. If I gave you sine of 3x, OK, what's the derivative of sine of 3x? Cosine of 3x times 3, right? So um, any uh, <clears throat> all the derivative rules that I gave uh, that we learned from last semester I always had us do times u prime, right? Sine of u is cosine of u times u prime. That u prime is basically chain rule, asking you to consider if there's an inside function that you always take that inside function's derivative. Right. So sine of 3x becomes cosine of 3x times 3, which means that the integral, the antiderivative of 3 cosine of 3x dx must take us back to what? Right, must take us back to sine 3x. So that makes sense uh, if we're going from here to here and backwards. But if we're starting with this, we know that cosine becomes sine, but how do we know that um, that three that's there is going to disappear? So it's a little bit harder to track when we're putting things back. It doesn't seem as intuitive like with chain rule, because here we see that, oh, we need a three here. But how do we know that if there's a three there or that we need a three there to produce this to go back and it's a little bit harder to um to do that uh without having some sort of help um to know you know it's like, oh do i need a three do i need the one third you know what do i need to put things back uh from for the antiderivative process okay so um what we're gonna do is let me just read through this um uh, uh and then we'll practice these steps we're going to assign the u value to the expression inside the parentheses. OK, and that allows us to keep track of that portion that is coming out of that u prime from the derivative side. Um, then we're going to find the derivative of, of u du dx. We're going to solve for dx and we're going to try to get everything in terms of u and du. So the hope is that we're, we're trying to the idea is that with u substitution, we want to create an easier version of the problem with a rule that is available to us. And then we take the antiderivative and then we bring the original variable back. Okay. okay, so let's look at example two here. We got the antiderivative of x times x squared plus one to the 15th. Right now, the only rules available to us um, that we know are the trig rules and power rule. But if we wanted to consider a power rule for this problem, what's the issue? Or what would we need to do if we wanted to apply power rule for this scenario? Yeah, what do we, what do we need to do with that 15th power? Um, well, let me ask you this. If, if, I, if I gave you integral of x squared plus one squared, what would we need to do if we wanted to get it ready for power rule? Expand it, right? So this one is okay, but Imagine having to expand it 15 times, right? That's something that we're not going to be expected to do. And we want to be able to also find a more efficient way of doing it, right? I mean, we have Pascal's triangle, but I mean, this is not something that um, that we need to be able to do by hand. However, now having said that, we always want to explore the idea of expanding first, OK? We never want to um, jump into a conclusion that we need a more complicated uh, process until we've explored you know, the idea, can I just expand this out and just rely on power rule? If I can't, then we're going to go to option two. Okay. And this is one that requires option two because that, that is too messy, too difficult to, it takes too long to do it by hand using our first method. Okay, so 
uh, now that we understand power rule is not going to be a good uh, fit for this problem, uh, we're going to try to create an easier version of this problem before we take the antiderivative. Okay? And the variable u is going to help us do that. So we're going to assign the u value to the expression inside the parentheses. Okay? So what's our u value going to be? Yeah, inside the parentheses, so x squared plus one. So um, go ahead and um, underline the x squared plus one and also underline the dx. Okay, that is our goal initially. We're trying to we're trying to find a replacement for those two pieces and we're going to leave that x alone. The hope is that the x will take care of itself once we go through this process. Okay, but our initial is find the parentheses, find what's inside the parentheses, underline the dx and and um, and those are your first two priorities. We're going to find a way to get those in terms of you um, to produce an easier version of the problem that we want to solve. OK, so we'll say u equals x squared plus one. OK, next up, we're going to find the derivative of u with respect to x. We're always going to take this next step the same way. We'll do du over dx. That means we want to find the derivative of u with respect to my independent variable x. OK, so x squared plus 1, x squared becomes 2x. And then 1 goes to 0. OK, now next step, we want to find what dx is equal to. So I'm going to cross multiply and then make my way to solve for dx. Okay. So if I cross multiply 2x dx equals du. dx equals what? Yeah, u over 2. Okay, so this is how you're going to start your u substitution for all these problems. You're always going to start off with your u value of what's inside the parentheses. You're always going to find the derivative, and you're always going to work to get dx by itself. Good so far. Okay, so now we're going to find we're going to make the replacement. Okay, we have a, a substitution for x squared plus one. We'll make that replacement. We have a substitution for dx. We'll make that replacement. But everything else in the problem, we want to hold on to it. Okay, we want we don't want to get rid of it. Uh, just yet. We just want to make the substitutions that I've underlined, that we've underlined, and then everything else will still stay in the problem. Okay, so the integral of x that's going to stay, x squared plus one gets replaced with, wait, x squared plus one gets replaced with u, right? So u to the 15th, right? And then dx gets replaced with u over 2x again. Okay. okay, in order for u substitution to be successful, we have to find a way to get the x's to go away. If the x's do not go away, we have to either consider another option or we have to or we have to find a way to work around that issue. Okay? We cannot move forward with the with the antiderivative if the x's do not go away. But in this case, do the x's go away? Yes, because they are. They're divided by each other, right? I got an x in the numerator, x in the denominator. I can remove the x's. And if I do that, I know I'm in a good shape. Because I know that I can move forward. It's OK to have leftover coefficients. We just can't have any leftover variable. Everything has to be converted to be in terms of x. All right, so where do you think we can put that to? Um, no, well, we're just rearranging it. Is there another place to put that two? That two is really a what? A one half. Okay, so I'm going to push that two out in front as a one half because it's in the denominator. And any coefficient I'm, I want to push out in front because I just want to see what I have to deal with. Okay, and now I have one half integral u to the 15th of du. And we have a rule for this because that is exactly the rule for power rule. The power rule is integral of u to the n du equals u to the n plus one 
over n plus one plus c. Okay. And we are applying that rule. So if you go through your substitution, whatever that's, you know, once you push the coefficients out in front and you cover the coefficient up, it should match exactly like the rule that's available to you. If it doesn't match exactly, then we don't have a rule to use. Our integral rules are very restricted. We cannot be creative and, and find and, and adapt it. it. It's very restrictive. Um, and if it doesn't look exactly like it, we don't have a rule to use. Yes, this is power rule. You guys uh, memorized this already for the quiz. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys already been applying this um, rule. OK, so uh, we keep the one half. The one half has no impact, but it's going to have to stay. U to the 15th becomes what? Yeah, U to the 16 over 16 plus C. This is now we're back to indefinite integrals. So no, um, no bounds, we do plus C. Do a little bit of cleanup. I can push that out as 1 over 32. Okay, what variable did we start with in the problem? X, so we got to. So U is only a temporary variable for us to um, match and solve and, and do the calculus. But now that we're back, now that we've found the answer, we have to bring our original variable back. So 1 over 32, replace the U back with what? Square plus 1. To the 16 plus. I do want to prove to you that this works here. So let's say that we started with this and we want to find the derivative. Okay. So if I ask to find the derivative, this is chain rule, right? So how would you? So let's think back on first semester. We should be able to get back to our starting point from this. So um, what's the what's the outsized derivative here? So now let's go back. Outsized derivative, you bring down the 16, right? So 16 over 32, which is one half. X squared plus one raised to the 15th times 2x. We get one half, right? One half times two is just x. So I'm left with x, x squared plus one to the 15th. So that's what we started with, right? So U substitution, I mean, chain rule is easy to get to the derivative, but it's a little bit harder to get back to where we came from. So U substitution allows us to, to have, uh, to keep track of those pieces to get back from the derivative back to the function level. I just want to show you that this does, you know, that we, we are going backwards because this um, function will take us back to the derivative that we started with. OK, uh, example three, um, integral of x squared secant squared 2x cubed. If we look at this problem here, this is too complicated, right? We don't have a rule that can handle this mess of a problem. So uh, our next option is u substitution. And where do we look for our u value? In the parentheses. So I'm going to underline the 2x cubed and underline the dx. Those are our priorities right now. We don't care about anything else, not until those two pieces have been um, replaced. Okay, so our U value is 2x cubed, U dx. Yeah. Cross multiply. dx equals, okay, okay, so 
we have what we need to make our initial set of substitution. Now, as you make your substitution, do not replace anything else. Everything else in the problem stays. And then once the dust clears, then we can decide how we want to move forward. Okay, everybody good so far? Hey, we cannot move forward with U substitution unless the X's go away. Can the X's go away? Yes, numerator and denominator. But there's a leftover what? It's okay to have a leftover six. We can't have a leftover X and push it out in front, but you can have a leftover coefficient and push it out in front. We can push out this as what? One sixth. OK, the question is, do we have an antiderivative rule for secant squared? Yes, remember from um, remember I made you guys memorize the derivative rules uh, for first semester and just asked you to go backwards, right? So it, if the tangent derivative of secant squared, we know the antiderivative of secant squared will take us back to what? Tangent, so we have a rule that matches. We're going to use this rule. Okay, so let me. Uh, highlight what rule we're using here. We know the antiderivative of secant squared u du is simply tangent of u plus c. Okay. If I cover up that one sixth, it should match exactly to the t, the rule that I want to use. Even if there's one slight change, that's going to negate my ability to apply the rule. Okay, so I want to keep that. Once you keep that in mind, we can't be creative and move things around and match you know if this was square raised to another squared i can't just say oh i'm just going to adapt this to be squared if it doesn't look exactly like it once you cover up the coefficient we don't have a rule to use right? but this matches perfectly so we can apply our antiderivative rule equals one sixth what tangent of u well tangent of u plus C, right now, once you find the antiderivative, your integral and du notation goes away, and you're just left with the antiderivative plus C. Okay, so we have basically our answer, but we started with which variable? X. So we got to bring X back, right? This keep in mind that if you go through U substitution, your U your your U variable is going to help you get through the messy part of the problem, but just keep in mind it's still a temporary variable. We still have to bring back the variable that we started with. Okay, questions so far. Okay, example four. Um, integral of x cubed square root of five minus four four uh, five minus x to the fourth. Can we expand this out? Can we rely on power rule? Can I distribute the x cubed through? So order of operation prevents us from doing it because it's a radical. It's not a parenthesis. This is really raised to the what? One half. So, um, you know, we always want to look to expand. This is not one that we can expand. We're kind of forced into um, into U substitution potentially because our first option does not pass. So, um, I said uh, we need a set of parentheses to find our U value, right? So, can I create the problem or rewrite the problem with a set of parentheses? X cubed. Parentheses, uh huh, raised to the one half. Right. So now this um, fits our, or visually helps us a lot, a lot more seeing those set of parentheses. Okay. So let's underline the parts that we are going to replace, and we're hoping that everything will pan out in the way that we can apply a rule. Okay. So our U value.
All right, DUTX. Okay, cross multiply. Solve for DX. Okay. Make your substitution. Replace what you've underlined, but do not change anything else. Everything else stays. Can the X's go away? Yes. There's a leftover what? Negative one fourth, and that's okay. It's okay to have leftover coefficient. We just can't have a leftover variable. We have a rule that matches perfectly with this once I cover up that negative one fourth. What rule is that? Power rule. Yep, this matches perfectly, right? Integral of u to the n du. My n is just a, some number. Okay, so we have the green light to move forward because this matches a rule. So you have to keep track of the negative one fourth, but really um, the power the power rule that the calculus is coming from that integral of u to the one half. Okay, so negative one fourth stays. U to the one half becomes u to the 3 over 2 divided by three over two goes here what goes below same number right same number so um, whatever uh, exponent you create up here just copy that number down okay dividing by three halves the same thing as multiplying by yeah We'll clean this up, but we're going to make sure we bring back what? For our final answer, we want to make sure we bring back uh, variable x. Yeah. Keep in mind, your u variable is only a temporary variable. It helps you get through the messiness. Um, okay. Negative 2 over 12 is negative 1 6. And I'm going to replace the u back with my original variable. Any questions so far? I want to point out a couple of things here. Um, you know, uh, sometimes well, when we get to problems that are a little bit more involved, um, sometimes uh, I want to kind of give you some ideas to, uh, sometimes the hardest part of the problem is figuring out what the U value is. Right now it's a little bit easier because there's only one set of parentheses and you know exactly what the U value is. Uh, but sometimes if you go down the wrong path, you pick the wrong U value, there are certain things that can help you um, help you figure out that you're going down the wrong path. One thing is if the X's don't cancel out, that's a red flag. If you can't get the X's to cancel out, we can't just find a creative way to move forward. That means we went down the wrong path. The second thing is when you go through use substitution and you're staring at the problem that you're about to take the antiderivative with, it should look like an easier problem than what you started with, okay? Okay, so if you look this versus what we started with, the whole purpose is that we're trying to solve an easier problem, right? This is what we started with. This is what we were um, taking the antiderivative of, right? This is what we started with, and this is what we take antiderivative of. Okay, so um, we're always um, trying to create an easier problem. And the next thing is that we're never going to let u value be just x, right? If you just make a one-to-one -one substitution, 
you're not making anything simpler. So your U value is always more than an X, because if not, then you're just rewriting the problem with a different variable, and that's not really helping the process. So your U value is always a rather significant portion of the expression. It's never just a one one to one replacement. It's always U is equal to some um, something more than just an X. 2X cubed, X squared plus one, phi minus X to the fourth. Um, now, all these problems worked out so nicely in terms of the X's cancel out, canceling out. Um, so I want to ask you, is there a way to predict whether we're going down the right path before we get to it? What do you notice about your U value and the variable that you're trying to eliminate? Do you see a, a pattern here? Okay, it's always what? A degree higher. What is what's so what's nice about seeing your U value being one degree higher than what you're trying to get rid of? How do we know that this will cancel out nicely? Yeah, there's a derivative relationship here, right? You know that once you find the derivative, you're gonna get down to the variable that you're trying to match with, and that is usually a good sign, right? So here. My u value is x cubed. I'm trying to get rid of x squared. After the derivative process, that should work out nicely. Here, my u value is x to the fourth. I'm trying to get rid of x cubed. That should work out nicely. Okay. Okay, now, tomorrow, uh, we're going to talk about problems where it's not always going to work out nicely, but there's a workaround. But if you see this relationship, you know that, OK, it's going to be an easier problem. Uh, everything should, should flow pretty smoothly. Um, uh, when I go through the process. Yeah. Uh, yes, but not until the calculator portion of the test. We're still we're, we're getting ourselves ready for the non calculator portion of the test. And the calculator portion will come after this test. OK. OK, example five. So this is a problem that feels a little bit more um, potentially difficult because, well, first off, there is no rule that can handle this integral rule, right? We don't have a, a tangent to the fifth and x squared. I mean, we have a rule for secant squared, but I can't split this up because these are being multiplied. So this is one messy problem that we don't have a rule for. Um, this feels a little more difficult because it's not very apparent what the u value is. You know, is the u value um, tangent to the fifth of x is it secant squared x, and um, maybe if it, maybe it'll help if we can create some parentheses out of it. Um, what's a way to rewrite this using a set of using maybe multiple sets of parentheses? What's a way to represent tangent fifth of x? Secant squared x can be written as what? Secant x to the second. So at least we have the options in front of us, right? We're able to, to create a set of parentheses, uh, but there's two sets of parentheses. And so we have to kind of look down. We have to kind of um, maybe uh, do some guesses, do some guess and checks to see which one would be the better fit, right? Let's start with secant. If I let u value be secant, what's the derivative of secant? Secant's derivative is secant tangent, right? So if I were to, if I were to let the u value be secant, do I see a secant tangent that will pair up nicely? If I let the u value be secant, not quite right. I have a secant, I have a tangent to the fifth, secant tangent, that's not a nice pair. What if I let the u value be tangent? What's the derivative of a tangent? Secant squared, that's a better fit, right? If I can, if I can see the derivative hiding in the rest of the problem, 
I know that that will probably work out better for us. Okay, so um, thinking along those lines, then we're going to let the U value be tangent, and we'll we'll um, replace Vx and hope that um, everything will clean up. So our U value. du dx tangent becomes secant squared x cross multiply All right, let's make our substitutions. Tangent gets replaced with u, u to the fifth. Remember, whatever is not underlined, you want to keep it in the problem. Okay? We're only replacing what we've underlined. Okay, now once we make our substitutions, our next goal is can we show that, can we prove that the x's will go away? So here, can will all the x's disappear? Yes. Numerator, denominator, perfect match, divided by each other, canceled out. Any leftover coefficients? No, which is fine. Okay, sometimes if there's leftover coefficients, we keep, we just have to keep track of it. If not, then that makes it even easier. Do we have a rule that can match this? That uh, this is. Do we have a, a match for this rule? Probably yes. We can use what? Power rule. Okay. U to the fifth becomes plus c. Right. U is only a temporary variable. We got to bring back what? So replace u back with. Tangent x. Okay, you can either put that six below or you can put that one sixth out. It's up to you. And if I were to find the derivative of this, this will bring me back to this right here, right? So if I went through chain, if I went through chain rule, bring down the six, so I get six times one sixth tangent of x to the fifth power times Tangent derivative, tangent becomes tangent x secant x. So this gives me, um, sorry, tangent x becomes secant squared x. So if I find the derivative of this, it'll bring me back to that. That's always a good way to check. If you're unsure whether your answer is correct, if you find, you should be able to find the derivative of what you end with, you end with, and that should take you back to where you started with. Okay, okay example six. We see a set of parentheses, but do we need use substitution for this problem? Or let me write this out a problem a different way. What if I just put them over each other? Do we need use substitution for this problem? No. Yeah, just well split up into individual fractions and rely on what power rule, right? This is a similar process that you saw on the quiz. There's no need to um, to have to go through your substitution. These are individual uh, sets of fractions I can clean up and just rely on power rule. Yes. How could it be like one minus like one minus one half, like the at the denominator? Make it uh, y to the negative one half. You mean? Yeah, yeah you can. Um, I just I I like to um, go through this method because if the parentheses were not there, then students sometimes forget to involve the three in the process. So this is, but yeah, you can you can bring that y to the uh, negative to make it go up as y to the negative one half. Distribute through and do power rule. That's perfectly fine. 
Okay, but I'm going to I'm going to go through um, this here. So I'm going to split up into uh, individual fractions. So this is very um, basically a review from <clears throat> from the previous section. So basically, I want to show example six to show that we don't always want to think, oh, everything is used substitution. Right? We always want to kind of consider, okay, do I can I rely on the easier more foundational rule first. If I can't, if that doesn't work, then I'll go to use substitution. And the second thing is sometimes students feel, oh, I'll just do use substitution and it'll still give me the same answer. That's not quite the case. If if a problem is meant to be solved by power rule, it needs to be solved by power rule. Use substitution can't handle a problem that is meant for an easier process. Okay. It's only meant for uh, a problem that is that that can fit into that chain rule um, backwards. OK, so clean up here, bring this uh, Y to the top. Here I have, um, I can subtract exponents, right? One minus one half is just Y to the one half. So I have two standalone um, terms, power rule for each. Dividing by one half is the same thing as multiplying by two. OK, I may not get through all of example seven, but um, I want to talk at least uh, spend the next five minutes, see if we can get through at least parts of it. So example seven, okay, can I rely on power rule? Can I distribute my way through? No, this is a radical. It's not a parentheses. I can't, uh, board of operation prevents me from doing it. Um, can I rewrite? OK, so I can't do power rule, so I'm looking for use substitution now. Um, how can I rewrite the problem with a set of parentheses? X, okay. X, X plus three. Cool. Yep. Plus three to the one half dx. Okay. Um, what's our u value? And dx is needs for replacement. Now, is there a potential issue that we uh, can predict? Okay. What's the issue that? Excellent. Okay. Uh, something else. Yeah. The degree is not favorable, right? The derivative of x plus three is going to be one. That x is not going to go away on its own. This will require us to to be creative in terms of getting that x to go away. Okay. So we'll just go down. We'll just go down the path that we normally would, and when we reach that roadblock, we'll see can we get that x to go away a different. Uh, different method. Okay, right, so u u value is still going to be what u is x plus three. Okay, du dx just one cross multiply dx equals du. Okay, let's make our substitutions x times to the one half times the u. Okay. Now I see some students do this. We can't do this. We can't say, oh, x, I'll do power rule there, u, I'll do power rule there, and then I'll just finish the problem. These are being multiplied. We can't treat these like separate processes when there's multiplication involved. So we have to figure out how can I get that x to go to be replaced in a way that I can move forward in the problem. So do you, do you see a way that we can replace the X with something that is available to us? Because we can't move forward until that X can be replaced with something in terms of you. 
yeah, we do have something available. We have this equation that we can work with, right? So if I rearrange this equation here, x, this is u equals x plus three, but I can rearrange this and say x equals what? What's x equal to? u minus three. So there's my workaround. I can't get the x to go away initially, but there is something, I, I have something uh, relating x and u that will allow me to get that, um, event, move towards getting that x to go away. So u minus three times u to the one half u. Okay, we're still not ready to do power rule, but what can we do to clean this up so that we can do power rule? Distribute, right? Before we couldn't distribute, but now we can distribute. Right. Add exponents. U to the one half times U to the first power is what? Yeah, yeah. Minus three U to the one half to U. Okay. Before we were stuck, and now we have something that fits into our rule that we can use. Okay. So we apply power rule twice. U to the three halves becomes U to the five halves divided by five halves, okay, minus three times U to the three halves over three halves plus C. Okay. Dividing by five halves, same thing as multiplying by fifths dividing by three halves the same thing as multiplying by two thirds so two thirds times three is just going to be two okay let's keep reminding ourselves our u variable is only a what but yeah it's only a temporary variable right we still have to bring back what bring back x yeah OK, so you guys have homework um, over U substitution. Check your calendar. I'll send out a reminder Sunday that I'll be checking homework on Monday. Uh, we'll finish the rest of these notes and we'll finish the rest of 4.5, um, hoping that we can begin our test review on Tuesday. And we're going to try to get back your quizzes uh, Monday as well. All right, come get your phones. Um, 